The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Well, a special Happy New Year to everyone. It is Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Welcome to the only show yeah, folks, about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I am your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, the boss, Otis Wiley, and J.U. Achoo Choo Culcrick. If this is your first time to the show, we want to welcome you to the show and happy new year to all of you out there. And if this is not, we thank you immensely for your continued support. Uh, we've got a jam packed show today, a very exciting guest. And also do not forget to click the like and subscribe buttons on YouTube. If you're following the chat, this is where the party is at and definitely follow us on all of our social media handles at this is part of MSU. Let us know where you're watching from, too. We need to know. You know, we got we're multi-dimensional, multi-national players on this podcast <laughs> right now. So listen, guys, where is where we're watching from. Let's see something. Let's see. Show me something. Show me something. Hmm? What they working with out there? I see pancakes dropping all right. Yolanda Tron. I, I like that. I like the Yolanda Tron. <laughs> Fellas, how has the start of your new year been to date? Today. Mm. Today, look, I know, I know they missed us. I mean, I feel like it's been a long time since we've been able to kick it uh, in the chat in the living room, the virtual living room of this is part of MSU. Uh, I know they missed us, and I know it's been a minute since we all been together. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a great break. I'm gonna tell you that mentally, it was a great break from all the craziness we've been going through the past year, um, and. It's like we picked up right where we left off, but uh, you know, more for me, freshly new mind, and let's go get it. Two twenty twenty four for all it's got for us. Let's go after it. Mm, I love it. Two affirmations. Oh, this kind of affirmations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. It was, um, you know, a very good um, laid back um, Christmas this year, which which was really cool. I know, Stray. You know, I. I talked to you a little bit, you know, when I was in the hustle bus, because I'm one of those people that like to go shopping like Christmas Eve, and I like to go to the mall shopping. I don't like to order that on Amazon. I like to walk through, see it, feel it, hold it, touch it, you know, negotiate with the salespeople. <laughs> <laughs> negotiate. You had yeah, going out there on Black Thursday, me, Friday. And they ain't yeah. calls me while you're shopping. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what you doing? Like, I'm chilling. <laughs> Yeah, I talked to you. I talked to Stray. You know, everything was good. You know, Christmas Day was really cool. Laid back, had some of some family in town. Uh, we we ordered Chinese food. We did like a Christmas story. Christmas there, ordered some Chinese food. Kicked back, not a care. No, our football was on. Um, you know, so bringing in the new year and everything. Same similar situation. Um, just really excited for the year. Really excited for for us as a collective, you know, this is Sparta MSU uh, podcast family. I think we're going to be doing a lot of really cool things this year. A lot of really, you know, great things this year, great guests to come, you know, we're kicking off the year, the new year, you know, with a spectacular guest, you know, today. So really excited about it. And I uh, really excited to see where we, you know, how we grow and we prosper from there. Cause we've been watering this grass for so long. <laughs> <laughs> you're right guys you know been watering a lot of grass we've got a lot of exciting things to cover today you know we talk about our special guests because i mean it's it's an honor to have our special guests on this platform there's no doubt about it because we got to cover what happened last night okay uh, look there's a lot of things going on in michigan state uh, as far as the transfer portal and a lot of recruiting news and all that but we got to talk about it let's face it head on fellas the school down the road won the doggone natty last night. So let's 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 get into it. 
what's your what's your what's your thought process on it right now, fellas? Yeah, the <clears throat> the big thing about it is you you can't take away the fact that they're a good football team. They're a good sound football team all around, and uh, they they didn't need to do what they did this year to win games. They're, they're a physical, they're a sound football team and uh, you know, congratulations to them. But the biggest thing, the, the, the bigger picture, the bigger thing that I took from that game per se itself there was really straight. The, the dominance of the, the line, the line of scrimmage from the, the often Michigan's offensive line and Michigan's defensive line was really dominant. And the thing that I want to take away is like those teams from the West Coast now that are coming into the Big Ten Conference, the Oregons, the Washingtons, the UCLA's, the USC's, they're going to have to recruit differently because it's we've said it in the past, this different type of football that's being played on that side and you saw it didn't work that quick game that west coast you know get it out of your hand fast as slip screens but you know it's going to be different now the recruiting strategy is going to have to change especially you know coming out east in november to play a game in cold weather things change a little bit different you have to be stout up front and it shows that you have to establish a good run game if you want to be successful in football and especially in the big 10. No doubt about it. I mean, listen, Otis, I know you want to stand mute on this, but we ain't going to let you stand mute on this. You're going to have to that's talk exactly, about it, man. That's exactly why I went off camera. <laughs> yeah, no. I, had to mentally, I had to mentally figure out exactly how to be uh, – yeah, I, I'm i conflicted. The entire time watching the game, like you saw the dominance, like you said, and I'm just on the couch just like I try to <laughs> – I tried to give some little like – you know, Big Ten, you know, oh, yeah, like, let's let's compete. I honestly felt like they should not deserve to be there. And <laughs> for them to win it, like, they won it, obviously, fair, fair uh, game from a standpoint of physicality. Like, they dominated. Like, I've never seen Penix Jr. be attacked that way. And then, obviously, they bruised and battered him to where I don't know if his stock would drop, but, like, the NFL is coming at you from a standpoint like Michigan defensive coordinator put on them tough. And I think to your point too, um, they had a game plan and they stuck to it. You saw that, you saw that. And then offensively, like I, I had a rush home and they had already scored uh, that long run. I'm like, Oh <laughs> man, like, like it already started. The true dominance was like, they were not prepared for that, that ground game. Um, and so I still don't know how Donovan Edwards doesn't get the player of the game to me. Uh, from a standpoint, this man, this man goes the distance twice, and like I don't get how he doesn't get that award for offensive MP, but I digress. I just felt like I could not cheer for them. Oh, absolutely not. Every sense of like I looked at more so the admiration of like the football X's and O's. They did win that game, like, convincingly. And honestly, propels them for the future. So you know what you're going to get from a future of a Michigan football program. Uh, and that's – honestly, they look kind of like when we played them, right? Like, they they look that dominant. Um, and for us, it's kind of like we're seeing where we're scaling and how we will, will match up with them in the future. And I – it should get our blood boiling as it should, but I just kept thinking about their fan base on they're already reckless, and now you're just adding more to like they're just gonna be out here in the streets and we got coach uh hey, coach listen, coming they, in they, like they're they, going they, to be in the streets. They, they're burning couches in Ann Arbor. Can you believe that? And they, they, and they call us hooligans. Yeah, and they call us hooligans <laughs> like <laughs> good lord. Hey, didn't didn't someone say didn't someone say? We started that. No, didn't someone say those guys better check themselves? <laughs> absolutely, they, they absolutely did, man. Hey, listen, it, they they won it. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, you got to give credit where credits due. They were able to do it. Like the NCAA is going to do what the NCAA is going to do with them. You know, and that's coming. Don't think uh, I've talked to several Michigan fans. Some of them yes. extremely smart people. 
Go ahead, Otis. Was, What's up? I wish, honestly, I was preparing myself to go get me some buffs, and I was going to get a laser on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like y'all cheated, man. I don't care. Y'all cheated, bro. Like, y'all y'all cheated. So, I some of my buddies texted me. I'm like, I'm not talking to y'all until after this game, because I was hoping Washington <laughs> beat them breaks off of it it did not help so i'm done with it i it was let's move on let's move go on. Uh, congratulations to him okay you heard it here first congratulations but you know what i've seen a lot of uh i think those are called asterisks in the in the chat um we'll we'll to be continued but congratulations to our big 10 uh national championship let's go <laughs> Look, they're looking, they're watching us from Clinton Township, Michigan, Milford, Michigan, Dallas, Texas, fellas, Orlando, Florida, and Bend, Oregon. I see somebody new in the chat. I think I see a, is that is that Nikki Childs in the is, is that what we got? Is that Mama Mama Childs? Childs? Mama Childs in here? Welcome, welcome to welcome. the family. Welcome, welcome yes. to Sports Nation. Welcome to the family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama Childs, look at look right here. Look, we got a we got a little uh, a special Hall of Fame uh, announcement uh, for for Coach D'Antonio, obviously um, that we want to bring up a graphic for right now and, and and talk about this. This is this is College Football Hall of Fame Coach D'Antonio. Uh, we've got a goat breakdown coming up in a minute, um, guys. We're going to get back to this with Coach D'Antonio after these messages from our friends over at IHOP. Everybody come for the fresh and fruity. Hey. Only at IHOP, it's Rudy Tootie. Hey. Mix and match like a little combo cutie. Hey. Happening now at the big extravagooty. The Rudy Tootie extravaganza starting at $7. Create your own combo with eggs and bacon only at IHOP. Fellas. What up? <laughs> we're, we're having some a little technical. We ha, we don't have Coach D right now, so let's uh, um, let's talk about you know him as a you know overall. I know we're gonna get more into into more granular into that, but um, you know it's he got the he got the call, got the nod. We're gonna get more in in depth about that. Um to see how, you know, where he was, all of that stuff. So it's going to be an interesting call with Coach D. That's what happens when you're live. You know, you get on, you get off, and who knows? <laughs> Confuse me, man. Listen, this is the, the product of uh, being on live uh, podcast right now. He is – we're getting him back on here in a second. He's coming back. Uh, but, listen, Otis – Nobody knows Coach D the way you know him because you played the position that he loves to coach, right? You're a defensive back. He's a defensive back specialist. So I mean, you're very uh, – have, have very fond memories of his uh, coaching abilities in that secondary room. Yeah, I mean, he, immediately when he gets that that call, you know, there's no one else more deserving for it. Um, but, like, in the, in the thick of it when he did get the, uh, the job and took over the program, <clears throat> like – you couldn't like put the storytelling like what the, the career would project when he took over. But I do know um, it took me a long time to understand Antonioisms. <laughs> like it took me, oh, it took me half the season. I would say probably leading up to like Ohio State 2007 when we played at Ohio State, and like it finally clicked. Like I finally got an interception, ran it back, and um, you know it was it was like a. I don't not a love hate relationship, but it was new lingo. Like it was new, a new coach bringing in his defense, his uh, way of play, and it was. It took me a minute, and I thought it should click quicker. But I I knew Coach D. He loves you more than what you bring to the table as a football player, and I think that was a, an element of trust, right? Like you got to trust. Like he has, he has your your life and your career uh, at 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 the forefront, like priority wise, but he also wants you to be a great man off the field. And so it took a minute, but when you plan and you're clicking, like, and you start to know exactly how his mind works. And I think every former player who, who's came under coach D, you know how he operates and works is gravy. Like <laughs> it's good. <laughs> and she was laughing. Like, I don't know. Two had a different offensive guys, like two, like, 
they got a different walk of life. Like they got a different walk of life. And when you got a coach who's a defensive minded guy, spent his quality time with us because he knows defense. He well for him, defense wins championships. Offense, you know, gets us the scores, puts the points on the board. But when you got a sounding defense and you have smart players on the field, like it's it's a it's a grind. <laughs> like it's a grind. But you had a different lifestyle with. I look coach. at it like this, oh, I look at it like if you're playing for an um, if you're playing for an offensive minded coach, if you're playing for a defensive minded coach, I look at it as the parent versus the grandparents. So if Otis and the Otis had the parent coach D, the one that would discipline you, that would yell at you, that would you know put everything. But then I had the grandparents, you know, that oh yeah, have some more candy, do this, do that, you know, you have fun and they can <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, coach D was in their meeting room. He was right. in, you know. Like not even that, that like in our meeting room, but like you're in his office, like you are like <laughs> one on one on one. You spend most of my time that junior year, junior year, like we are in there, like safeties. Like he'll take us away from the defense of the room and like like you do what I tell you to do, or like mm-hmm. coach D also, he's like like he was like saving, like he's never gonna give up like doing the drills. Like he was like he always did our drill. For safeties wise. So like after the pre like practice drills, if you make it through that, you can make it through anything. <laughs> Straight up. Like he'll tell you to backpedal to Tim Buck too. And you be oh. pointing and you be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like deep as the deepest, Otis. Like, <laughs> you be like I'm deep waiting. <laughs> I didn't know it was just crazy. You just sitting there like just huffing and puffing, like, can we get to like Tackle circuit. If you get the tackle circuit, you need to breathe. <laughs> hey, listen, guys. We even talked about the grandparent versus the parent, the discipline for Otis, the grandpappy for Ju. Back when I, when he was coaching on the safe on saving staff, when I was there, he was my favorite uncle. I'm telling you, because like you know, when they the offensive coaches was chewing our, you know what, you know, I, he was the guy that I was like, okay, life is okay. We're, things are gonna be okay. <laughs> right. You know, he made me feel good. Right. When I saw him in the hallways and, you know, it made everybody feel like things were just going to be just fine, man. And obviously when you guys are playing and I'm on the uh, sideline doing the sideline reported things that you're doing right now, Chu, it was cool to see, man. Cause I mean, look, his career, it, it needs no introduction, but without further ado, uh, we have to bring on the man, the myth, the legend, the hall of fame coach, the most winning all time coach in Michigan state history with 114 wins though. Coach Dan Tony is part of there. He is. Hey, they need some computer classes out here. <laughs> that video. Oh, I got my, my daughter down here. Right here. You, got your, you, got, you got your daughter get you set up, right? You got me all set up. I was in, but then all of a sudden it just went blank. So, <laughs> you know, you made timeless. it. You're on time. All right. Well, Coach, man, man it's doing? good to see you. Good to doing see you, good, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. On your Hall of Fame induction, Coach. Congratulations. Long overdue, huh? Well, thank you very much. It was a surreal moment yesterday, and it sort of flashed back to all the people that it sort of made it happen for me along the coaching ranks, going up through the coaching ranks, and then when I became a head coach, uh, all the players that uh, that I was involved with and were on our teams, and uh, you know, you three guys were were all Spartans, and you know, Ju and Otis had had me at a as a head coach, you had me as an assistant coach on the other side of the ball. But, uh, I mean, just an incredible amount of people that are involved in this. And so that's why, uh, you know, I term it as a, it's a program win. You know, it's it's a program thing. Uh, we You talk about uh, we had you. We had you when it was like scary, Coach D. <laughs> <laughs> scary, Coach me anymore. <laughs> we, we had that foundation set in Coach D coming in there with that. I remember specifically you had these surveys that you had us do, and uh, it was like Coach's sense of humor, and like everyone put like zero, zero, zero. <laughs> and then, like, the next meeting, you came in trying to crack jokes, and we're like, uh, Should we laugh? Should we not laugh? What's yeah, happening? You know, I think I was the only one that got the jokes sometimes, <laughs> right. Coach. <laughs> coach. Well, yeah, coach, yeah. before you jumped on, we were talking about like, listen, like, there's a different coach D when 
you're you're a defensive mind coach, right? There's a difference of like the defensive players get all of you, and the like, offensive players get like the we talk about the grandfather, like now you're a grandpa, like you're loving your yeah. grandbabies, <laughs> like you know, you're not as hard as you are on your daughters, like like <laughs> that's what we got. Yeah, you're probably you know? right. <laughs> You're right. You're probably right. <laughs> well, that, you know, yeah. you know, it came from the came from the backup. You know, the defensive backs got it the most, but, <laughs> and then uh, the linebackers and the front people, and then the specialists. They didn't get anything. I was real passive with them. I was like, "Hey, can you help those guys? They're sensitive." Yes, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, got to take care of that football. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. okay. No. Uh, I appreciate all you guys, and I appreciate every one of our players. And uh, heard from so many players yesterday, and you know, past coaches, and you know, a lot of people made this happen. As I said, so it was a surreal moment, still is, and um, you know, sort of pinch myself. All the people that that have been involved in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, talking about your your career, we want to bring up a goat breakdown brought to you by Maine Financial Stats. Oh. Listen, the GOAT, greatest of all time, Coach. And here it is right here. Want to bring it up. Career resume. Thirteen seasons at MSU, 114 wins, 57 losses, winning this coach in MSU history. Three, count them, three times Big Ten champs in 12 bowl games, nine of them straight. I, I mean, that is just an incredible, impeccable record. Uh, I don't know if it will ever be duplicated here in East Lansing, Coach. Oh, look at that. You, look at that. <laughs> put my glasses go, on. Look see that. <laughs> don't oh, man, don't oh. man, there he go. <laughs> there you. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Oh, go, oh, man, go, go. man. Hey, <laughs> Coach, Coach, that middle, that middle photo uh, – like ultimately, my heart, my heart rate start going up, because that's that's the grin that you have when we go through pre pre practice in the drills, the safety drills, and you're just grinning like you probably told me to, or told somebody to go do something they didn't do what you're supposed to do. But look at this photo; it's that grin of like uh, you don't know what you're doing, backpedaling. <laughs> look oh, at that! Look at that! That's when you I still could throw it. Pedaling. That's when you still could throw it, right? <laughs> Exactly. Coach, kind of talk about talk about what uh you know, I know the National Football Hall of Fame. You've been a part of it, like celebrating our players that have went to the Hall of Fame and you've been at the dinner and, and supporting from that standpoint. But now shoes have turned and it's you being celebrated. But talk about the call from Steve Hatchell and and the, the committee there. Like how did that go um when you got the call? Yeah, you know, really I got the call from Alan Haller and uh Coach Izzo. Okay. Um, over, over to Coach Izzo's office, and they they told me that uh, I was inducted, you know, and uh, going in. And then uh, from there, I got a package on Monday morning at uh, at nine with the with the ball in there. I don't know if I can throw this one. Yeah, you don't want to scuff that one up. <laughs> with the ball in there. Oh, wait. Woo. Man, I was like, okay. I just like. What, what do you? When you got that call from Coach Izzo and Alan Howell, you're like, oh, God, they asked him to come back and coach? <laughs> no, no, I think we would sleep there. No. It just uh, is a surreal moment, like I said, you know. So it's it's, it's something that's uh, sort of a once-in-a-lifetime thing, you know. And, and I started looking at some of the things that, that occurred over the, over my 13 years at Michigan State, and it's – it's amazing what you guys have accomplished and the coaches and everything. And there's some guys that, you know, we didn't have a lot of turnover at, at, on my staff. So there's guys there that been through it with me the whole 13 years and down Cincinnati as well, like Mike Tressel and some of the other guys. So, you know, Mark State and Dave Warner, long time. You know, I, I can go through all of them. Jim Bowman comes back from from being here with me at another point. And uh, but a, lot of, a lot of coaches enter into this too. Yeah, so coach, when you talk about, I know <clears throat> there's a lot of Coach Antonio isms that you know you, you said, you know, just being a speck in the in the air, and uh, you know, one thing that stuck with me as well, and I saw this um, 
you know, I was thinking I had this written down and then your daughter posted this on social media as well as is about completing your circles. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that is something that stuck with me. And I think we've, we've said that on this podcast a few times, you know, with the coach D'Antonio isms. So like, what does that mean to you completing your circles? And you think this completes your circle right now, the call to be in the uh, coaches hall of fame? Enough college football. Yeah, you, you know, my dad used to always say that, and my mom too. My mom says she started it. You know, she's trying to get the edge, but <laughs> but uh, my dad used to always say that. And I think what it means is it just, hey, when you start something, you want to try and finish it. You know, might not always be able to, but you you want to try and do that. And I thought it was very important as a young player at Michigan State. And you know, when you come in there, you know, all of a sudden you see all these different guys, different players, you're in a different environment. And all of a sudden, you might not be quite as good as you 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 thought you were. So there's a process to all this. And uh, um, or hey, when you get to the 2011 championship game, and you know Wisconsin ekes out a win, and you're there for the 13 game, that's an opportunity to complete your circle. So at certain stages in your life, you're gonna have opportunities to close it out. And uh, that's just what that means. You want to close that out. Whether that's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one-on-one -on -one game or five-on-five -five game or or a football game or whatever it is, or a class or your relationship, you know, you want to close it out and uh, and complete it. Absolutely, and that's what I would always mean by that. Coach D, look, I know you you've been around a while and you've had a lot of impactful people in your life to help you get here. Not only the players, but there's been some mentors along the way, some great coaches. Uh, what is your best advice you think that you've gotten from a mentor uh, as you've been able to reflect now on your career? Well, I've, I've been blessed to be around some great coaches. I mean, and really, when you look at my coaching tree, you know, you got the Jim Tressel coaching tree running through Earl Bruce and Woody Hayes and various people there. You got Nick Saban's coaching tree that runs through so many coaches, you know, again, Earl Bruce, but probably. Bill Belichick would be the guy that he would you would look at, and and uh, and along the way, there's been a lot of dif different assistant coaches that have been involved in my life as well. But I'll tell you one from each guy, from Jim Tressel, he would used to always say, "This two shall pass." <laughs> Something happened bad, and he'd look down the table and he'd look at me and he'd say, "This two shall pass." <laughs> oh, wow. Sure enough, it would. And then uh, Nick would always say, "Hey, if you." If you're not coaching it, you're letting it happen. Mm -hmm. And so we were always coaching the, the smallest of details as we went through everything. And uh, um, those two, if you can just take those two things and, uh, and understand what the meaning of those two things are, uh, you got a chance to be successful. Wow. Because you're going to have to handle adversity and you're going to have to coach the little things to be successful. Yeah, because I, <clears throat> I wouldn't graduate it because you had that talk with me. Right, like after that spring, that semester spring where I went to the combine and tried to get to the NFL, and <clears throat> you were like, "Hey, you need to complete that circle." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, what do you mean? Like, hey, do it now. Get back in it and finish that degree." And I had like one semester and a half to go, yeah. and uh, and I got it done. But you know, that's the element of like now we're teaching our our kiddos of like the things sure. that you taught us clearly, right? But. I like. I got a lot of stories that I can obviously divulge. Into. <laughs> I got a lot of stories I got, too. I, got, I, got, I was <laughs> going to get out. So it was. I remember a specific story, Coach D's first year. So he had an influence, you know. And we're going to get into you know setting a foundation as a new coach, and we're going to talk about you know what Coach Smith coming in will have to do. But um, I remember specifically, it was the practice after we voted captains and I was voted a captain. And then we were doing the walkthrough session there, like the how we we're going to walk through for the game. Coach Manny had us locked up and I was up front there and I was like kicking my legs and going crazy. And Coach D's like, Jay, you keep showing your ass. You'll be the first captain to ever come out last. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I hear a lot of stories that are hard for me to believe sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> About yourself? About myself. Because like, honestly, I, I learned, like, you, I think sense. you black out, Coach. Like, are you, you, like, you black it out. You go just, you go yeah. guns blazing oh, yeah, fire. Who, who told me, but they said, you know what you told me at the water cooler that one day? It stuck <laughs> with me forever. I said, no. He said, 
And he told me, I said, I have no recollection of that. <laughs> really? I think you and Coach Manny be, be having that uh, selective memory there. Yeah. You and Coach Manny. <laughs> yeah, Coach Manny's the best. And we oh, got Thomas was, Wright in the chat. He keeps oh, talking. Yeah, right. He's saying, what's up? Imagine having Coach Saban and Coach D in the same meeting room as a freshman. That's what he said. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Let's just say I was passive. <laughs> no no. Coach, a big thing to you is you, you talked about, you know, your guys. And uh, every time that you um, – and it's so oh, – it. it's so – um. It's so cool to be, you know, the first class that that had you and uh, you consider, you know, us, your guys. And Otis, you know, he brings Otis brings this up a lot of the times, you know, something that stuck with all of us is when you came in and you talked about, you know, everyone in this room is our guy as coach and staff here, like you couldn't just bounce and hit the transfer. You weren't kicking anyone out of the program. And you took pride in the fact yeah. that nobody left. I did. You know, I did pride, man. Yeah. So what our that coaches, mean? the third, first thing that we got to do is keep every player here. Mm, wow. And, uh, you know, it's so different now with mm -hmm. the portal and people bouncing here and bouncing there. And especially then when there's a change of coaches and everything like that, you know, people pounce on them. Recruiting's never really over. But uh, I do remember saying that, and somebody said that to me yesterday that in the press conference, they mentioned something about it, and I said, oh, I got our guys. I right. Already have, I already have our, our players. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we lost one player after the first year going into the second. You got to, people don't, people forget that the first year we started out 4-0, and and then we ended up 7-6, and but we lost, uh, Matt Ryan was the quarterback for BC, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, and, uh, well. Otis, did you give up a big one? Nope. <laughs> I did not. You I did got not. no look on you. Back to back number one picks right. yeah. from year to year, right? Matt right. Ryan no, didn't. Yeah. That's that right. But people yeah. forget yeah. next year in, nine, in 2008, yeah. going in that last last game, that we were playing for a Big Ten championship against Penn State. Mm. And had we won that game, we would have been 10-2 and two That's right. in that second year. And that's, that's, all, that's all players that Otis and – now, Jay, you wasn't there. No. He had his 22 touchdowns the year before. That's why I was trying to feed you at the goal line. <laughs> uh, we had a great football team. And, and uh, the thing that I remember about that game, which is sort of funny because my girls remember, my, my two daughters remember. Yeah, timeout. Why'd you call those timeouts? At the yeah, end of the that's oh, they were ticked. I remember. Said, I was why didn't timeline. you call those timeouts? They were mad, man. <laughs> Just to be a thorn in their side. And I knew – yeah, Just like last that. night, if Washington would have called those timeouts, you know, and not let it run down. Mm. And Kirk Cousins was their quarterback, came over and said, what's the play? I said, don't worry about the play. Just get back up there again and call another timeout. <laughs> so he walked up to the – looked around, you know, looked around. Timeout. Boom. <laughs> 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 Throwing the roses at me. <laughs> Throwing the roses at me. But I, I, I knew that, hey, we were going to get an opportunity. next time. Next time we were here. Next time we were playing for a championship, they'll have been here, and they're you know there's a little bit of remembering that they're going to have to do, and there's a little history behind this. So next time we went there in 2010 at Penn State, we needed to win to be a co-champion in the Big Ten and be the 11 and one or whatever. Yeah, I think 11 and one, um, and we got it done. So, yeah, we got so some we got some of your guys in here, Coach. Let me show you know Big Pete Pete Clifford's in the chat here. Um, I saw Pete. Uh, Jesse Miller. Jesse Miller. Jesse Miller's in here as well. Yeah. The big boys. The big boys are in here. You know the all old linemen, they're going to show up now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys had some guys, man. When we first got here, you had some guys. Yeah, we did. And that's why we always sit back and be like, man, could you imagine all the talent we wasted the first three <laughs> years that, you know, you could have <laughs> wasted? We wasted yeah, talent. I and, agree. and we could have had, like, we just needed that foundation and that structure. You know, and we needed those um, us, we, our versus I, me, mine, you know, kind of mm -hmm. mindset that was brought in. So talk about the how do you set the foundation as a coach going into a program, you know, for the first time? Well, I had great examples. You know, I came in with Nick Saban. First of all, I came in with Jim Trestle at Youngstown State. Then I eventually went to KU. They were already in place. Then when I came to Michigan State in 95, it was a new staff. And so it was a new foundation. And uh, saw how we did it there. And then 
I left there and went to Ohio State as a defensive coordinator. And again, it was a new program. We were just coming in, so we had to build that program. And then I had the opportunity to do it myself and go to Cincinnati and build our own program there. And uh, so what is that, four times? Mm-hmm. That was in a new program. So, you know, when I when I came to Michigan State, people forget also that I think that, you know, I gobbled up our, our nine coaches and offered them all a job, and eight of them came immediately. So, you know, when I came in and I talked to you guys on Monday morning when I got the job. Yep. Tuesday afternoon, all our all our coaches were there. And Wednesday, they were in schools out recruiting for Michigan State. Mm-hmm. So they already knew the process. They already we didn't have to figure out who we were or what we were going to do. They already had a process. Some of those guys had come with me from Ohio State um, to Cincinnati. So we already had a process. We already had a thought process that was in place that, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And uh, we went to work. And, you know, you got to be receptive on the other end, you know on your end, on players end, you know, the support staff, and they bought in. Absolutely. Ross Weaver's in the chat. Yeah, says, yeah, yeah, Ross's yeah. birthday. Today is his birthday, yeah. Today is his birthday. Probably have peach cobbler. <laughs> peach cobbler. Peach cobbler. And, Coach, That's I think uh, that press conference, that press conference uh, actually, no, that first meeting, I, I still hear the, the thump of the ring from Ohio State. Like just, oh, yeah. I, I didn't. I don't even remember what you said to us. I was just like, "That is a big ring." Like, I, like I was, and I think physically you wanted to do that. Like, yeah, he was like, "We we're gonna win here, and we're gonna win with you guys." And like that, to choose point, everybody in the room like that stress because we were stressing. Like, like I'm not. I'm being transparent. We were stressing who was the next person coming in because we was like, we won. People are like, man. If I lose my starting job, like people were very <laughs> nervous, right? I was worried I was going to be switched to fullback. Everybody's nervous. <laughs> I, I remember going into Coach D. I was like, Coach, because everyone was like, Yeah, Jay, this coach loves, you know, big fullback. So you're going to, I was like, Oh, no, hey, I'm going to coach the other We didn't have any. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have it. There wasn't a fullback on the team. No. We so moved. They were like eight That's linebackers. Cool. So we took linebackers and made them fullbacks. Like Andrew, uh, Andrew Hawkins. Andrew Hawkins. Jeff Trapp. Pearson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kevin Pearson. Yeah. And then I told Coach Z, I was like, Coach, um, are you going to move me to fullback? He's like, <laughs> and then he's got his basket. He looks up. He's like, what do you play now? I was like, running back. He's like, that's what you're playing. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I took off before you could change Life changing game. moments. Yeah. <laughs> and but wow. one of the things, Coach, that I, that I loved about you is the fact that you empowered the players. Um, you know, when you came and you started, you know, there were obviously the captains, and then you had, you know, each great select a player representative for the Unity Council. And, um, you know, I think that's something that's really cool that people from the outside don't really see that empowerment of the of the players that you provide. And, you know, every Friday after mm-hmm. practice, you will tell you, you know, have a meeting with the hey, what's the temperature of the team? What are things doing? And for us, I remember, you know, when we finally were going to a bowl game and you had us in the room and you're like, you know, that empowerment, like, what do you guys think curfew should be? We're like, no curfew. You're like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Well, I always thought, you know, uh, a player-led team was going to be better than a coach-led team, you know. And, and he really, you saw that last night with Michigan, mm. you know, yeah. because, you know, I stayed up and I watched it all. Mm. And I watched the the uh, awards presentation and, 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 you know, they were impressive. What they said about a brotherhood and playing together and looking to each each other's each side. Yeah, that was impressive because really that's what that's what was built here. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what you need to have if you're going to be successful. So the yeah. Unity Council is something that we we built into and uh, we picked them, I think, two at a time. So we'd have the whole team vote on t- two guys, said they had to be players. And then we'd find two guys and then we'd move to the next – Two, and we, we did that with 12 people. So we had our 12, what we called them eagles, because you don't find eagles flocked together. You know, they'd find them one at a time. Mm. And, uh, you know, we built it and, you know, gave them a, a, a role and tried to empower them. Man. Like, like that's a, <laughs> well, the things that come out, like your 
you're visionary, like your your vision, your faith based, like God is obviously the foundation of of your life and and for you speak things into existence. And I do remember <clears throat> this is where it was a game in 07. We go to Ohio State. This is you, your homecoming. And um, we're on the sideline. Choose out there. They're on offense, but you're chipping at the defense and, and specifically Malcolm Jenkins to say. And <laughs> you, know, you guys were going at it. And I was just like, man, coach, coach does not care. Like, I will play for that guy. <laughs> anytime right and um and from from the standpoint of i i hope i wish we could see like you will be the ones but when you went to the rose bowl yeah. and visiting california and you did a video and then you showed it to the team and i'm just i'm assuming some of the guys on the team was like coach coach b is crazy like what is he talking <laughs> about <laughs> right yeah but like <laughs> but you sit there with with conviction humble like we will, you guys will be the ones. And, and then just to see the fruition of like when you won that game, um, you know, talk about that. Cause that's also was coach Narduzzi's last game. Correct. Well, or he was, was there in 14 too. About 14. Right. Yeah. Either game was the last game, but, uh, um, but yeah, talk, you know, let's talk about that though. Like talk about that big, big, big game because it all led to starting with us then going right. to the Rose bowl, but that, that completion of seven years, yeah, it was seven years, and there there are a lot of biblical things, you know, mm -hmm. in there. You know, th there's a reason there were twelve eagles. You know, <laughs> disciples. There were disciples yeah, there were, nine, <laughs> there were seven. There were twelve. Right, it wasn't eight like a board. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, you know, at the end of the uh, banquet um, after the 2012 season, and you know, I always talk at the very end. And I don't know, I didn't have it down on a piece of paper. I just ended up saying that you would be the ones because, you know, remember now going into that, coming out of that season, we'd lost 13, five games by 13 total points. That's right. Five big 10 games by 13 points. We had a good football team. We just needed to inch, inch our way a little farther up the totem pole. And we'd coming off two 11 win seasons. So one of which 2011, we, we were inch away from going to the Rose Bowl that year. So um, I was out for a donor event and uh, um, flipped my phone over to one of my daughters and they took the video and, and I just said, hey, this is when I wanted to go out there. And they wouldn't let me in the Rose Bowl, by the way, either. I had a call, call I didn't call it in advance. They didn't believe that I was a coach. Chevy <laughs> <laughs> Chase here on vacation, you know. <laughs> and uh, we got in there and we walked around and um, took some pictures, took some videos, and then went back. And uh, I showed it to him the first day of summer camp because I felt like that was what we could accomplish. Now, remember that year, Will Golston, Deion Sims, mm -hmm. and Le'Veon Bell, yeah. three guys who probably played at least eight years, Will still playing in the NFL. Right. Yeah. You know, eight year right. veterans, they left. Yeah, when they the, they went into the uh, so, but I didn't think I should come out there and say you might be the ones. <laughs> <laughs> if we work hard, we yeah, could after be the BW three game, right? <laughs> BW three. So I stayed the course. But anyway, we showed it to him at summer camp, and I think everybody forgot about it. And then the night before the game, you know, we have our meetings the night before the game. I showed it the night before the game. Mm -hmm. You could have heard a pin drop. And still, yeah, right. still, it's still sort of fresh, still sort of emotional. And that was our seventh year. And to me, that's a year of completion, again, biblical. And um, anyway, we got it done, 13 and one, you know, and, and really uh, had some tremendous uh, football players and that, that type of thing. But we, we were just together as a, as a person. And uh, that's the year we moved that rock every year, too. Nice. I no, forgot dude. about blue vase yeah. though. Blue. All the, I have all the I have oh. the blue vase. I have the blue vase because when I was coaching, I Coach reached Will, out. He's about to grab it. He's about to grab it too. <laughs> Look at you guys, boy. The blue vase. We got. We got. We got to talk about this. Oh, there it is. Our special it's guest. Blue vase. <laughs> now I'm the cat out the bag here a little bit, but yeah, there's certain letters I get from certain people, players. 
Yeah, and you keep it <laughs> in there. I stick in the blue vase. <laughs> so there's some messages in the bottle here. But uh, well, Coach, I'm glad, I I'm, I'm glad I didn't break that vase on my senior uh, our senior dinner at the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I did break a box. <laughs> but uh, Coach. it was just I think I think coaches use whatever whatever, and you know there are certain things in in people's lives that are meaningful and. And you bring that forward. And, you know, I think my job as a coach was to bring things forward, not not to win games. I really felt like, hey, if you empower players, if you develop relationships with people, um, and those are strong relationships, you bring people together, winning takes care of itself. Inevitably, you will win. Um, but if you're just, if you're there and you're split and you got issues, that kind of stuff. Sorry, guys. I've been busy days. I know <laughs> I should turn down the you. ringer. That's what my wife always says. Turn down the ringer. <laughs> Co- Silence. Coach, Silence. Coach, look. I know that's you a, that's what I thought. I thought bring people together, you got a chance to be successful. <laughs> that's right. And, and you you inspired a lot of people, uh, a lot of coaches. You said poured into you, and you've also poured into a lot of coaches and players uh, in, in the game of football. There's also a lot of other coaches in other sports that truly respect you and watched and modeled after what you foundation that you've laid at Michigan state. There was one coach that was supposed to be on the show, but he had a family obligation, but he did have this message to send to you and we're going to show it to you right now. Hey coach D my favorite thing happened. I've been asked to send a little video and congratulate you on your hall of fame. And it's with all your former football guys. And you know, still football's my favorite sport. But I, for one, know everything you went through. Uh, you know, I was there when you were hired. I was there when you decided to, it was time to get out. And uh, all of us here appreciate you so much. And I hope all those former players that are watching and listening, and I know you're thankful of them because we wouldn't be who we are without our players. And you've had a lot of special ones that have been very successful. So just want to say from all of us here, congrats. And for all the guys listening, thanks for what you guys did for Michigan State, for our football program, but almost mostly for Coach D. Yeah, he's special. You know, I mean, you know, when you stop doing what you love and, you know, you go to retirement, there's going to be that, there's a little, you know, it's a change. It's a good change, but there's some things that you're going to miss. And he's really kept me in, kept me in, involved and in contact and uh, over 13 years. And really, you know, again, you go back, I, I spent 20 years at Michigan State. And a lot of that time, I was right beside that guy. And uh, he shows you how to win. And he, he's a champion in so many respects as a person, as a coach, as a as a mentor. And uh, so I appreciate everything. Um, so coach, this year, um, that little uh drive zip drive i held up there was actually you sent me that video the video of the blue vase that guy on the phone and so oh, yeah watch it sometime between us and, <laughs> and then also on that is a bunch of different skits too from players doing that doing oh their yeah we used to always have a skit every year <laughs> <laughs> bowl so. game we, were at. we had some crazy stuff going on you know i remember <laughs> so we were in arizona at that bowl game and uh um i said wait hey, John Amianto is the blue base guy, lives here in Scottsdale. We got to find him. We didn't have his number or anything. So I said, I told Brad, um, Brad, you got to find John Amianto's says blue base. So he looked in all the phone books. He went through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he found the blue base guy. So he came and he spoke to us at breakfast. Wow. People, people did wow. not know. They were like, this guy really exists. They thought I was making it up for a while. <laughs> So speaking of bowl games, there's this there's this this story I heard. It was um oh, I don't know if it was the year after it was in Florida. It was um the the Gator. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah, you tell us about the Gator good. guy? <laughs> that you had yeah. Covered? So we missed the Outback Bowl and told Tim Allen our our operations guy. You know, it was coming down to the end. We always try to do something at the end of the at the end of the, the week, full week, special sort of fun, you know, whatever. And so I said, hey, we got we to gotta figure out some, what are we going to do? And he said, well, down in Florida, why don't we get a, an alligator and blow up one and maybe have somebody wrestle the alligator? Because remember, we were always showing the videos, but 
Muhammad Ali wrestle an alligator, you know, <laughs> you know, the whole Muhammad Ali talk at the end. And then we have plays, big hits and that kind of stuff. Have him, you know, in the fights and that kind of stuff. So we would always end every practice that year with that video, some video like that. So I said, no, nah, we'll, we're not going to get a blow up alligator. I said, we need to get a real alligator. <laughs> So he went to work on it. So sure enough, we got some guy to come out, two handlers come out with an alligator and they're going to wrestle this alligator. And we had fenced, fenced off. There was a fence, a natural fence. They put the alligator on the other side of the fence. So, but we had one of the handlers dress up like one of our players with the helmet and pads on and everything. And, uh, and we should, I said, said to Trent Robinson, who's going to wrestle the alligator? Who, you know, what, what Ali say? Go wrestle an alligator. I said, well, there goes one right now. Who wants to wrestle it? And about 50 hands went up. I was like, no, no. So I got everybody to settle down. You know? <laughs> I said again, I said, who wants to wrestle the alligator? And the guy's name is Justin. And Justin says, I will coach. And his name is Justin. I said, okay, Justin, it's all you. He took off after that alligator. And, uh, about 50 guys took off with him. They hurdled the fence and everything ran through the fence and all everything else. So they got it gathered around the alligator. I'll leave the rest of the story to your imagination. I'll just say that. <laughs> we got Let's just say that guy ended up getting sideline passes after. <laughs> we got sideline passes. Let's leave it at that. Is this did it did, did, did end well for him? <laughs> it did. He's still living. He's still living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it was crazy, it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah but uh we tried to i rode a horse to practice the next week the next year so you know i learned my lesson that horse started rearing up a little bit i said we're not getting anybody they're not gonna dump me on the ground so we took the horse in <laughs> we took the horse in. Oh man, coach! coach. Yeah, people think we didn't have fun. We had a lot of fun. I'll tell you that we had oh, a lot absolutely. of fun. We absolutely, we were serious. And we I, were serious. I, I, we had a lot of fun. I say that up until now, like you know, all the time, you know, playing, and it's not just because I had a lot of touchdowns my senior year, but that was the most fun I had playing football was that 2007 season, your first year, my senior year, because it was just, it was such a family. And everybody that you brought in, all your coaching staff, it's like everybody were good dudes, good people. And, you know, up until now, I still talk to Coach Staten, you know, our OC, mm -hmm. Coach Treadwell, you know, great guy. Coach Enos was there, part of the staff. Yes. You know, Coach Tress, all those guys, you know, just really good people you brought in. And, uh, you know, it's a testament to you, Coach. And that's why, you know, you got guys like I've never heard anybody say anything like, oh, man, I didn't like Coach D. You know, everybody is always like so positive. Mm -hmm. Guys that still playing in the league to guys that were just on the team, you know, off. With, off I appreciate that. And, that's why you coach, guys. That's why you coach. And, you know, I used to pick my assistants. And, you know, because you can – Picking an assistant is, is picking a teacher and you can get better at being a teacher, but it's, it's difficult. If you don't have character, it's difficult to get better. So I wanted to make sure that we had good people of character and, uh, um, you know, tell a good joke. <laughs> we had some funny dudes, like you said, and we had, they used yeah. to say, I used to, I, it's crazy. It sound I would always look and say, do I want to ride around in a car with this guy for three and a half hours? Mm -hmm. If the answer was yes. Okay. Yeah. And another you gotta thing be good coaches, but you can always be a little bit better. And you know, my take on things were if you had the same teacher in the same classroom for four years, how good can you be if they're teaching the same stuff, mm. the same curriculum? How good can you be? You can be you can maybe maybe be at your best. And you know, hopefully your best is good enough. Right. Um, I know let's talk a little football here before we let you go here and everything, but I know you love fakes in, in on the special team side. And I remember, you know, when we we would try to come up with different fakes and talk about empowerment of players that you would do, you would let us, you know, draw up fakes and, um, you know, just to practice it. And then you try to break it down and everything. So like, what was the thought process with you? Did you just have that belief in the defense that you're like, 
we're going to do this fake, you know, no matter where we are on the field. I mean, obviously within reason, but like, what was your thought process with that? And why did you like, you know, being that gambler, you know, well, you know, the, the, you know, certain fakes, they had to be, you know, not expected. So you had to pull them and you had to take a big gulp sometimes and go. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, again, you know, through, through a lot of this, I really truly believe I was blessed along the way, you know, Mm -hmm. We had some great fakes, you know, and uh, some amazingly, a lot of them were in the fourth quarter. You know, JU against Penn State, you know, if we don't, we end up six and six that year if you don't make that. And that was all you because it wasn't working, it didn't, wasn't looking well. <laughs> you just ran through some tacklers on the, on the punt fake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, I remember we faked one against Purdue as well. And, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you, you started getting a reputation for it, but, which isn't good because then they're going to prepare for it. But they're always, if you study the film and people are consistent in the way they line up, then you can fake it against them. So that's why I always said, hey, whatever we do on defense against fakes, punt safe defense, you know, the most important thing to me on punt return was getting the ball, no fakes, no fumbles, no penalties. So, you know, um, those type of things, you know, if you can do those type of things, you've got a chance. <laughs> People are asking about Little Giants. Everybody wants to know about Little Giants. Yeah. Coach. Who, who came up with that call? Well, Coach Staten came up with that call. Mm. And uh, what we started doing was naming our fake punts and our fake field goals after the movie Little Giants. So we'd have some some person in that, in that movie or something. So Little Giants was one of them. But, you know, Box car, whatever her name was, you know. Icebox. Icebox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we even had one called the, you know, that long thing that they had that they were calling their fake. The Annexation of Puerto Rico. Yeah, we had that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So, so anyway, we just we just sort of had fun with it. But our players had it. We we asked them why they wanted to name it. I think that I think the specialists always came up with the. Hey, diddle diddle, send Sadler up the middle. Yeah, <laughs> that one. The hey, diddle diddle. Yeah, Mousetrap. Mousetrap. Mouse wow. you know, Which one was your season. favorite fake? <clears throat> well, you know, I would say Little Giants, except the after effect wasn't too good. Right, right. Uh, and, you know. <laughs> God. Explain, how, how did that go for you, like from your perspective? What, what happened? Because we hear the story from Will Teeman, because he talks about he. He feels like he caused it, I guess, because you had he made it. You, he, made Coach, you he, said, he says, like, maybe you're going to correct the facts on it, but he said you gave him a call after you got out and said, hey, you made me climb up those. Remember that makeshift little media room we had with the little uh, library? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever said that. He said, uh, he said, you, <laughs> he said you called him. Only two said, steps, Otis. I'm not in that bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> but you heard it here. <laughs> Go yeah, through the breakdown I, I of that. Feel about that next time I see him, because <laughs> that game, that game was. You just know when some of you're off a little bit. And fortunately, I listen to my body, and everybody should do that. And there's a message yeah. in that as well. So you know, mm. but uh, came out of there, you know, stronger and take care of myself. There you Coach, go, Coach. That year, wait, was that the year that Batesy was our only backup quarterback? Was the year before that, Aaron Bates? <laughs> Like I, I remember, we went into the spring. We didn't have a backup quarterback. Oh yet. yeah, and he was our only well, one. <laughs> but he's our know, going back to to our players. You know, remember we had Ryan Hoyer. Uh, we had um, I can't remember because it's right off the top of my head. One of our backups came out to see me at the end of spring. Said, "Hey, can I stop by and see you?" And uh, say, "Yeah, sure, come on by." You know. Pulls up, he's got a U-Haul phone behind it. It's guard. I was like, this don't look good. Is that Connor, was that Connor Dixon? Yes, it was Connor. Yeah. Yeah. Connor Dixon. <laughs> he went back to Pittsburgh. He went to but, but our three quarterbacks that summer in the meeting rooms for the 2007 season were Brian Hoyer, still playing, Nick Foles, and mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins. So those were our three quarterbacks. So, you know, we had some players. And John Van Dam. Yeah, and John Van Dam. <laughs> He said, he said, what's up to you too today, mm -hmm. by the way. And uh, J go. Javon said, hey, man, I'm trying to, I'm watching the show. I can't get in the chat. Tell Coach D I said, what's up? So, 
That was my Javon that was impression. Best. That was a Javon impression. <laughs> <laughs> coach, coach, we know that you love to, you know, before we let you, that you love to like on your off, your own off time to go out in the yard and do a little gardening, right? You know, just do some yard work, just work around the house when you have some time off and, and maybe do a little golfing, according to what Becky has said lately. That's when you are game. doing those tasks. That's a tough game. <laughs> it is. It's a humbling game, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever think to yourself, you know, over the last few years since you've been retired, like, man, you know, I wonder, did I leave too early? Could I get back into it? Did you miss the game? And then it, it's so rare that you had the opportunity to come back into this game uh, with the event of all this transfer portal, NIL, all the stuff that's swirling around because of what we needed here in Michigan State over the last season. Did you feel like once you came back, that was something that, you know, you miss it or – and you can attack this game as it is today, or you're 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 glad that hey you're 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 good. Well, you know, there's there's two sides of that. I think uh, just like everything, every big decision, there's a couple sides of it. You know, I miss football. There's no question about you miss talking football. And I enjoyed that. Our, their staff at Michigan State this past year was great. Players were great. I really enjoyed sitting there talking about football, or listening, and that type of thing. Being on the field, being around players again. But to take charge of an entire program, you know, it's a 365, 85 hour a week job. It never ends. And um, so I'm just, I'm fine where I'm at, you know, no problems. You know, there's a lot that you, you don't miss and there's some things you do miss, but that, I think that's what's gonna be, that's what retirement is about, you know, for everybody, you know, whatever you did for a living and you were very proficient at, if you had the opportunity to do that, you know, you're gonna miss those things, but. Uh, but there also comes a time when um, you, you think, okay, I've done this long enough and you need to turn your attention to other things relative to family and things of that nature. Great. And, uh, you know, what, what advice would you give Coach Smith coming into his first season at Michigan State here? Mm. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> there it is. Get your guys together. Get your guys together. Get your people together. Enjoy the ride. This, this place is an incredible place. Um, you can print, win here. That's been proven. Um, you know, uh, that's been proven. Um, you know, it's becomes it's a tougher conference now. You know, I don't understand why they don't split it, have conferences within the, the, the conference. But, uh, you know, 18 teams, you finish ninth. I mean, you're either half empty or half full. <laughs> so now you're looking at it. But uh, you can be successful here and you can win and uh, – Got the new new building over there. They got a lot of support. And uh, from my perspective, my what I've seen so far, he's uh, he's taking his time with uh, decisions he needs to make, and he is uh, he's got a plan, and he's going to stick to his plan. And it seems like he's very resourceful. And uh, you know, I've been impressed. Hmm. Um. Real quick, too. I know I'm getting all the questions in there. <laughs> you you got, man, uh, I mean, two is just – he's, he's, he's a very normal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like he's on 20 minutes. All it's right. quite normal. I remember I said Otis asking all the questions. Uh, but you oh, had a man. reputation of getting these um, these stars, these two stars, th you know, and guys with chip on their shoulders and developing them, being program guys. How do you think you would fare in today's uh, – coaching with the transfer portal and NIL and not just how much you think you do you think like what are your thoughts on the transfer portal and NIL and all that well first of all I think that I could do the job let's just put it that way you know I, mm. I, I recognize talent mm. just because some yeah. guy sitting behind a desk puts a couple stars behind somebody's name doesn't make him a player nor does not having any stars behind him make him a non-player so you know we took our time and we looked at players and there was a funnel sort of up you know, and I've, guys were responsible for their recruiting areas. And that means they had to know not just who wanted to come to Michigan State, but who was going to Northwestern, who was going to Ohio State, who was going to Bowling Green, what kind of senior season they had. I mean, you look at a guy like Jack Conklin, who's all pro, all pro. I mean, yeah. And he had a scholarship offer in the state of Michigan. Mm. And he comes here as a walk on. You know, so we had a lot of guys, or some guys, you know, Kyler Ellsworth becomes a Rose Bowl. MVP, you know, Duck West, Denard. You know, I can go on and on. There were a lot of guys that 
that came here and, and built their own resume. Um, but uh, we took our time and evaluated them. And as far as the transfer portal and the NIL right now, you know, that's a, that's a slippery slope. <laughs> it really is. You know, how much you're going to pay a guy relative to a guy maybe that you already have in your program or how much money you have or, you know, and somebody's always going to have more than you. And, um, but uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different deal. You still have to, but I still believe you have to build a, a brotherhood, a, a relationship piece the way you got to be committed to each other, committed to the process and got to be able to communicate. You got to trust each other. Those three things are paramount to success. And if you can do those things, you can be successful. But so, but there's no question that what I saw with the portal and with the NIL was much different than what I experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's – I think it's a record. I don't think there's been a walk-on player that was drafted in the top 10 in the NFL draft ever, Coach, and that, that, that speaks to your talent evaluation prowess. You've done it time and time again in a uh, lot of areas. Kenny, Kenny Willekes. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's another. I mean, they're all over the place. If you look, there, there are a lot of players that played. Um, and um, But it's a mindset. It's a mindset. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, you don't really know how a person's going to develop. I remember, I remember Kyler Ellsworth sitting in my office and he was 132 and one in wrestling. And he was a 185 pound wrestler. And he's sitting in my office telling me he's going to walk on. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> give you a shot. You know, at the end, he's 235 or 240, and he's a Rose Bowl MVP, and the guy was a wide receiver in high school and an outside backer. Mm. You know, Blair White. Yeah. With, mm. with you guys. Yeah. Blair White, I wasn't going to bring to camp. In 2007, I wasn't bringing him to camp because he was injured at whole spring. Mm. I said he could come when school started. He came in and said, hey, basically he told me I was making a mistake. <laughs> and so I got my eraser out and – <laughs> Put his name in there and scratched another guy. <laughs> so he came in as the one ten, and you know the guy played in the NFL for five years. So <laughs> that's awesome. But, so there's a lot of good stories. Coach, your philosophy. I think I, I learned this when I was fundraising and I was on the sideline broadcasting. Um, you talked about when you're recruiting, you would always if somebody brought a player to you. Uh, you would always ask them, are they worth five? Are they worth five more, like five plays to watch on film? If they're worth more than five, then I want to see see this. But, like, is that true from a standpoint of, like, looking at five clips, right? More than five because everyone's seeing highlight films. They're showing their best, right? But, yeah. like, you go in from a talent development standpoint, what are you looking at from a recruiting standpoint on the film right now? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know about that story. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I, you know, I had to make a film with 60 plays on there, and it was called a hit tape. Yeah, okay. And that's what the NFL does. You know, so they would take 60 plays, and uh, I always was concerned is, hey, what was the score? When, you know, that's what people don't understand. What's the score of the game when you're, when you're playing? Is mm -hmm. he, are, he, are they winning, losing? What kind of program are they coming from? Are they playing a great league, or is it a watered-down league? Um, so there's a lot of factors that I looked at um, that I just thought were important in in, uh, in recruiting. But, you know, we had a 60-play hit tape. When they got to a point, I was going to watch 60 plays of that guy. Now, I might make the decision after five plays that he's a no-brainer because there's just certain things you see. You know, you see explosiveness or speed or size and speed and all that type of thing. But they were going to be a 60-play hit tape. Not a, not a highlight tape, a hit tape where you saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. So you want the raw footage. <laughs> That's the raw footage. I don't want the, I don't want the <laughs> Oh, um, man. <clears throat> well, I got one last story before we take you off, Coach. I remember we were going to Wisconsin, and uh, – Ooh. It was the first time we had DJs in practice. You you brought when you came in. We had a DJ during practice. It was usually some of the hurt guys, Kaz and Deal. They were, oh, yeah. <laughs> and because uh, Wisconsin at the end of the third, they play House of Pain, jump around. And I yeah. remember you're like, I don't care what the score is. 
our sideline better be more hyped than theirs when they play that song. So all week long, that song's playing. And we get there, and we're in Camp Randall, and we're down seven. And the defense is out on the field. The end of the third, that song comes on. Our sideline goes nuts. Guys on the field dancing. And then so I was like, oh, I'm back there. I'm like crip walking. I don't know how. But I, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's like, damn. I was like, oh, I think I went too far. I look at you. You're like. We didn't win that game. We were close. Yeah, we were. We were close. Oh, man. This has so, been incredible, man. And Coach. I remember when I first came there in 07, last yeah. thing. Yeah. They told me, just so you guys know, they told me probably two or three years before we go to a bowl game. Mm. Mm. So they already they put that year one. <laughs> yeah. Put that in your hat. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, thank you so much, Coach. Yeah, All right, guys. absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I want some chili for Mama D. Yeah. Some chili. Can I get some soup? Some chili. Put put that you order in. Go. Any kind of, come on down. Go. To I will. I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> We're gonna do a show. Hi, right, Jason. We'll see you guys. Thanks for having me Man, on. Good absolutely, you. absolutely you. coach. I look forward Appreciate to being back you. up there. Congratulations, <laughs> Coach D'Antonio, Hall of Fame inductee for the College Football Hall of Fame. Look, guys, <laughs> excellent. I, I mean, like, I don't know how better, like, how how else you can get. I love the goat. Shoot, did you get that for Christmas? No. So this is the story behind the goat. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, Dude, last night. in that basement, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. Last night when we were talking and, I don't know, that thing came out and, boom, we hit Coach D. Hey, can you come on the show? And just like that, he was like, yeah. And I was just sitting there last night watching the game, and I was like, Coach D's the GOAT. Because I think we said it in the chat or something like that. And that's so why I went on Amazon. I was like, I was like, first I wanted to see if I could rent a baby GOAT. To bring on the, you oh, know, come on, come then, on. So obviously, <laughs> you, baby go. you couldn't do that, right? Yeah, well, so, you, of course, you can't. You know, yeah, my next best yeah. thing, my next best thing. So I went to Amazon. I was like, let me see if I can get a goat mask because Shannon Sharp always wears a goat mask when he talks about LeBron. So I was like, <laughs> so I went on Amazon. I was, like, I was like, boom, it can be here. It can be here. Um, you know, by tomorrow. So I, I ordered it. I'm at work today. My wife sends me a message. Did you buy a goat mask? <laughs> I was like, we yeah. apologize, Brian. We don't know what he's thinking. Hey, I honestly, I honestly was like, man, I just realized you ain't got no neck. <laughs> no what? The you neck. Ain't got no neck. You the had neck that thing. I was like, going what's on? going on? <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I'm wearing my AFC championship shirt. Oh my God! Yeah, I'm wearing this part of this, but the AFC Championship guy. That was an awesome interview. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it could have gone longer. I mean, Coach D <laughs> is an absolute delight, right? Listen, I, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things to take away from that. I, I think the chat was amazing again today. A lot of people following us, and thank you guys for the the collection plate that was passed around again. I, I think it was was that Steve and Cal. Yeah, they always step up. They always do. Mama Childs, we need you guys on the show next. Oh, man. Yeah, can we get a little aid? You know, you got to get Aiden on him. You got to talk to him. You let everybody, uh, you know, get to introduce himself to Spartan Nation from a personal standpoint. We love that. QB1. QB1. Got to do that. So, Jay, you'll be Ju's guy. Shoot you. Mama Childs, J.U. loves the quarterbacks. You know, he's got to make sure they always hand that rock off to him. You know, he's not in the backfield no more. And, you know, I love the quarterbacks, too. You know, we got to make sure we protect the quarterbacks. Otis, he going to pick them off. But, guys, final thoughts before we get out of here for our first show of the 2024 season. Yeah, no I just way, no better way of welcoming the new year with a Hall of Fame coach. Blessed to obviously play two years under coach uh, D. Uh, a lot of our players, our friends, um, we're brothers like for life because of 
Coach D coming in like that 07, 08, kind of just reestablishing like the love for the game. Um, but also you can enjoy your brother next to you <laughs> going to battle as well. And he's not your enemy, right? Like there was elements of that. Uh, but when he came in, it was just good to hear those stories and, you know, getting those those laughs obviously out like a lot of joy uh, yeah. that you kind of go through them walking down memory lane. So his congratulations to to coach like giving flowers. Now we always talk about give give flowers when they're here breathing live like alive. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the element for coach. Um, and it's great. We needed that from the state, of Michigan State. Yep. So I saw I saw you a lot of say a lot of elements. Hey, yeah. The reason why I'm in my element because Coach D gave his elements to us, right? So <laughs> right. So yeah. No, I, you know, to your point there, oh, you know, you're 100 percent right. Coach D is a guy like we talked about. It was just within, hey, let's have coach on the show. And within five minutes of us reaching out to him, he was saying, Yeah, absolutely. You know, how are we doing it? And so, and that's something that that he provided for us as players. And I'm glad now that people from the outside, you know, we have this platform that he can come on and, you know, talk to us, his guys and, um, and, you know, be himself and he can show, you know, how much fun we had as a program, how much fun we had as players, you know, in that building with him and how, you know, yeah, we, we did the work on the field, but also we got it done, you know, as, as that collective family. And we have guys in here, you know, big Pete's here, Ross, all those guys that, you know, we mentioned in here that we still, you know, we're still rocking with each other, you know, because of coach D made that bond for us. So guys, this is part of MSU fam. Let's keep going. Retweet this, you know, what you guys need to do, take this link, add it to your social media page, get those likes and subscribe, tell your friends to do it. Let's get, let's blow this thing up this year in 2024. Let's get after it because we go as far as us in this, in this chat and in this room goes. So let's get after it this year. This is part of MSU family. I love it. What you said, everybody, you better listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. You know, <laughs> Hey, I like that you too, say, uh, you Steve Smith. That like button. <laughs> the button. <laughs> Came out like Ric Flair. I see that, Steve. <laughs> Woo! To beat the man, you got to beat the man. Look, guys, I, that was an awesome show. And Coach D was class as always. And, and it's great to see him get his flowers. Otis, as you said, that this is good um, to hear the stories. And who really called? Are made that play, Little Giants. You know, right. All those things. If you don't know, you better go back and listen to it again on YouTube. Take it, check it out, guys. Look, the, the best is yet to come. You know, this is a great start to the new year. Uh, so next, now we can't. We <laughs> we went look, all, we struck real hot. Now we got to keep. Yeah, we we got to keep it up. We got to keep it up. <laughs> we just warming up. We just warming up. Yeah. 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 And we're going to do a nice little intro video on the close here. But, you know, for Otis Wiley, J.U. Coker, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Guys, have a good night. God bless you. And go green. Go white. Go white. I find a lot of the things that they are, do amusing. Yeah, they need to check themselves sometimes. But just remember, pride comes before the fall. Anything, anything specific? Just here, pride comes before the fall. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support. And as always, go green.